Captain Zixnax of the Galactic Confederation's science vessel Curiosity couldn't contain his laughter. The wheezing, clicking sound that passed for mirth among his species echoed through the ship's bridge, causing his gelatinous form to quiver and ripple in a most undignified manner. His iridescent skin flashed a kaleidoscope of colours, a physiological response to his intense amusement. Oh, by the great void, he managed between guffaws, his voice synthesizer struggling to keep up with his rapidly changing vocal sex. You can't be serious, Dr. Alex. This. This thing is what the humans consider a weapon. Dr. Elix, the ship's lead ex archaeologist, held up the object in question. Her four arms, each ending in delicate, multi-jointed fingers, cradled the artifact with the reverence of a true scientist. It was a long, slender tube of what appeared to be primitively worked metal, with a wooden stock attached to one end. The wood was scarred and pitted, telling tales of countless battles and adventures. The metal, despite its age, still held a dull sheen, hinting at the care its previous owners had lavished upon it. The whole contraption looked as if it might fall apart at any moment, yet it exuded an aura of stubborn resilience. "'I assure you, Captain,' Dr. Ellix replied, her tone a mixture of amusement and scientific interest, her compound eyes reflecting the artifact in their faceted surface. This is indeed classified as a weapon in human historical records. They call it a musket, I believe. It dates back to their eighteenth century, which would be, oh, about nine hundred standard cycles ago. The captain's laughter redoubled his gelatinous form, now resembling a sentient jelly in the throes of a seizure. Nine hundred cycles. Why, that's practically yesterday. And they were still using projectile weapons. How quaint. Lieutenant Vrain, the ship's tactical officer, leaned in for a closer look, his antennae twitching with curiosity. Unlike the captain's invertebrate form, Vrian's exoskeleton gave him a more imposing presence. His compound eyes whirred as he focused on different parts of the musket, the built-in medication allowing him to see details invisible to the naked eye. But how does it work? Vrian asked, his mandibles clicking thoughtfully. I don't see any power source or energy emitters. No graviton manipulators, no plasma chambers, not even a basic particle accelerator. It's just... Dr. Elex rotated the musket, showing off its various parts. Her movements were careful, each motion calculated to prevent any damage to the ancient art. Well, from what we've pieced together from human historical records, and our own analysis, it uses a chemical propellant to launch a small metal projectile. The humans would pour this grainy substance, called gunpowder, down the barrel, followed by a lead ball. Then they'd use this mechanism here. She pointed to the flintlock to create a spark, which would ignite the powder and wait, interrupted the captain, his laughter momentarily subsiding as he raised a gelatinous pseudopod for silence. Are you telling me they manually loaded this weapon? For each shot? That's correct, Captain. Dr. Alex confirmed, her mandibles twitching in what passed for a smile among her species. Each time they wanted to fire, they had to go through this entire process. Load the powder, tamp it down, add the ball, aim, and then fire. And if it was raining, she let out a chittering laugh. Well, let's just say wet powder doesn't ignite very well. The bridge erupted in a cacophony of alien laughter. Even the usually stoic Lieutenant Vrian joined in, his antennae twitching in amusement as he imagined primitive humans fumbling with their weapons in the rain. Oh, this is too much, the captain wheezed, his vocal sac straining with mirth. And to think, the humans actually conquered their planet with these toys. It's a wonder they didn't blow themselves up in the process, Dr. Ellick chuckled along with her colleagues. But there was a glint of something else in her compound eyes. A spark of respect, perhaps, or a hint of caution. Yes, well, primitive as it may seem, we shouldn't underestimate. She was cut off by a loud bang from the ship's docking bay, followed by the blaring of alarms. The sound reverberated through the ship's hull, causing the delicate scientific instruments to rattle in their casings. What in the name of the Galactic Corps was that? Captain Zixnex demanded, his gelatinous form solidifying into a more alert posture, all traces of amusement gone. His skin, previously a riot of amused colours, now pulsed with the deep reds and purples of alarm. Lieutenant Vrin was already at his console, tentacles flying over the holographic controls. The air around him shimmered with rapidly scrolling data feeds and security camera outputs. Sir, it appears we have an intruder in the docking bay. Security feeds show, by the void, the captain's eye stalks swiveled towards the main view screen, extending to their full length in shock. A human? Here? How is that possible? We're light years from Earth, 
in a sector their primitive vessels couldn't hope to reach. The screen flickered to life, showing a grainy image of the docking bay. Smoke curled lazily through the air, partially obscuring the view. As it cleared, a lone figure stood revealed. The intruder was clad in what looked like a patchwork of scavenged armour, a mishmash of gleaming alien alloys and crude human metalwork. In its hands was a long, slender object that bore a striking resemblance to the musket doctor. Alex was holding. Impossible, muttered the captain, his voice synthesizer crackling with disbelief. How did a human get aboard my ship with that antique? Our sensors should have detected any approaching vessels, let alone one carrying primitive weaponry. As if in answer to the captain's incredulous question, the human on the screen raised the musket. There was a moment of stillness, a calm before the storm. Then, with a motion that seemed almost casual, the intruder fired. The effect was immediate and shocking. There was a flash bright enough to momentarily overload the camera's sensors. A puff of smoke followed, curling around the human's form like an eldritch aura. And suddenly, one of the ship's most advanced security drones, a marvel of Galactic Confederation technology, collapsed to the ground. A neat, perfectly circular hole had been punched through its central processor, the edges of the metal glowing cherry red from the heat of the projectile's passage. The bridge fell silent, all traces of laughter gone. The only sound was the faint whir of data processors and the rhythmic pulsing of the ship's gravity generators. Dr. Elex, the captain said slowly, each word formed with deliberate care by his vocal sacs. I believe you were about to say something about not underestimating primitive weapons. Dr. Elex nodded, her compound eyes fixed on the screen, mandibles clicking nervously. Indeed, Captain. It seems our human guest is about to give us a practical demonstration of why making assumptions can be problematic, as if on cue the ship's Kame system crackled to life. The sound that emerged was unlike anything the alien crew had heard before. It was a voice, undoubtedly, but one filled with a swaggering confidence that bordered on insolence. The Universal Translator struggled for a moment before spitting out a rough approximation in galactic standard. Ahoy there, ye blue-blooded bastards! Name's Captain Jack Hawthorne of the good ship Benjens. Seems like you folks have been having a right good laugh at our expense. Well, let me tell you something about us, humans and our primitive ways. The alien crew exchanged nervous glances, their earlier mirth forgotten. Captain Zeke's Nex's gelatinous form quivered. But this time it wasn't from laughter. His skin had taken on the pale, washed-out hues of fear and confusion. How? How did you get aboard our ship? He stammered into the calm his usual eloquence deserting him. Our senses, our defences. A bark of laughter came through the speakers, a sound that managed to convey both amusement and derision in equal measure. Well now, ain't that the million-credit question? Hawthorne's voice dripped with sarcasm. Let's just say your fancy schmancy cloaking tech ain't all it's cracked up to be, not when you're dealing with good old-fashioned human ingenuity, Dr. Elix's. Antenne twitched in curiosity the scientist in her momentarily overriding her fear. Fascinating. You were able to detect our ship despite our advanced stealth systems. But how? Our cloaking technology is based on principles that, that your species shouldn't even be aware of, let alone able to counter. Detect? Hell, we've been tailing you for the better part of a week. Hawthorne's voice was filled with unmistakable pride, like a child showing off a particularly impressive sandcastle. See? While you lot were busy gawking at our primitive tech... We were reverse engineering every bit of alien gadgetry we could get our hands on. Turns out, your stealth systems leave a mighty fine eye on trail, if you know what to look for. Lieutenant Reen's tentacles danced over his console, putting up sensor logs and running rapid diagnostics. His compound eyes widened in disbelief as the data scrolled past. Captain, he's not lying. I'm detecting a small ship latched onto our hull. It's, it's using some kind of hybrid technology I'd never seen before. It's as if someone took our most advanced systems and cobbled them together with, with, with good old human know-how, Hawthorne finished for him, his grin evident even through the audio feed. Ain't pretty, but it gets the job done. You'd be surprised what you can do with duct tape and a can-do attitude. Captain Zykesnax's eye stalks swivelled wildly, taking in the looks of shock and disbelief on his crew's faces. This was beyond irregular. It was unprecedented. But, but why? He finally managed his vocal sac straining to form the words, Why follow us? Why board our ship? Surely not just to prove a point about human ingenuity. 
There was a pause, and when Hawthorne spoke again, his voice had lost its jovial edge. It was harder now, with an undercurrent of steel that sent shivers through the alien crew. Because you took something that belongs to us, something precious. Ring any bells? The captain shot a panicked look at Dr. Ellex, who clutched the musket tighter, her forearms wrapping protectively around the artifact. The artifact? Zexnax asked, incredulity colouring his tone. But it's just a primitive weapon, a curious relic, nothing more. Surely you don't mean— Oh, it's so much more than that, Hawthorne interrupted, his voice low and intense. That there's not just any old musket. That, my gelatinous friend, is the personal firearm of one Captain James Cook, a piece of human history you lot decided to borrow from the British Museum. Dr. Ellex's compound eyes widened in realisation, her scientific mind racing to connect the dots. The anomalous energy readings, I thought they were just background radiation, but she trailed off, staring at the musket in her arms with new respect and not a little fear. Bingo! Hawthorne's voice boomed, causing several of the more sensitive crew members to flinch. Turns out old Jimmy Cook picked up more than just maps and coconuts on his voyages. That musket's been soaking up all sorts of interesting energies for centuries. In the right hands, it's a key. A key to unlocking secrets that could change the balance of power in this galaxy. Captain Zyke's neck's form rippled with indignation, his fear momentarily forgotten in the face of this outrageous claim. This is preposterous. You can't just, can't just what? Take back what's ours. The sarcasm in Hawthorne's voice could have cut through steel. Funny, coming from the folks who've been plundering Earth's museums for scientific study. Now here's how this is going to go. You're going to hand over that musket, along with all the data you've collected on it. In return, I don't blow a hole in your pretty little science vessel. The captain sputtered his gelatinous form rippling with a mix of fear and outrage. You, you're bluffing. That antique couldn't possibly. Another shot rang out, the sound reverberating through the ship's hull. Suddenly, the main view screen went dark, plunging the bridge into semi-darkness. Hawthorne's voice came through once more, dripping with smug satisfaction. Oops, looks like I just took out your main sensor array. Wanna test your luck with life support next? As alarms blared, and the crew scrambled to assess the damage. A tense silence fell over the bridge. The enormity of their situation was sinking in. They were light years from help, at the mercy of a human-wielding technology they couldn't understand, and a weapon they had dismissed as harmless. Captain Zixnex's gelatinous form sagged, his earlier bravado evaporating like morning dew. He turned to Dr. Elex, his eye-stalks drooping in resignation. Doctor, he said softly, I believe we have no choice. Prepare to transfer the artifact and all related data to our guest. Dr. Ellix clutched the musket tighter, her scientific instincts warring with the reality of their situation. But, Captain, the potential knowledge we could gain is not worth our lives. The captain finished firmly. Sometimes, Doctor, discretion is the better part of valour. And it seems we have much to learn about valour from our human friends. As Dr. Ellix reluctantly made her way to the docking bay, Escorted by a nervous Lieutenant Brain, the rest of the crew couldn't help but marvel at the turn of events. Here they were, representatives of one of the most advanced civilizations in the galaxy, being outmaneuvered by a species they had dismissed as primitive just moments ago. The docking bay doors hissed open, revealing Captain Jack Hawthorne in all his anachronistic glory. He cut an odd figure, a blend of high-tech armor and what looked like eighteenth-century naval attire. The tricorn hat sat jauntily atop his head, seeming wildly out of place, amidst the sleek lines of the alien ship. Well, well, Hawthorne grinned, his gold tooth glinting in the bay's harsh light. Ain't this a picture? The galaxy's finest brought low by a bit of human history. As Dr. Ellix reluctantly handed over the musket and the data crystals containing their research, she couldn't help but ask, Captain Hawthorne, how did you come to know about this artifact's true nature? Our aim scans barely hinted at its anomalous properties. Hawthorne's grin widened, taking on an almost conspiratorial air. Now that, Doc, is a story for another time. Let's just say there's more to human history than meets the eye. You lot might want to take a closer look at those primitive cultures you've been studying. You never know what kind of surprises you might find. With a mock salute that wouldn't have looked out of place on an 18th century naval vessel, Hawthorne back towards his ship, the precious musket clutched to his chest. It's been a pleasure, folks, to give my regards to the Galactic Confederation. Tell them humanity is just getting started. As Hawthorne's patchwork ship detached from the Curiosity and disappeared into the void. 
the stunned alien crew were left to ponder the implications of their encounter. They had come seeking to study a primitive species, only to find themselves outmaneuvered and outsmarted. Captain Zixnax, watching the last traces of Hawthorne's ion trail fade from their senses, turned to his bewildered crew. His gelatinous form rippled with a mixture of emotions, fear, awe, and a grudging respect. Well, he said, his voice synthesizer struggling to convey the complexity of his feelings. It seems we have grossly underestimated our human friends. Dr. Alex, still staring at the empty space where the musket had been, nodded absently. Indeed, Captain, the implications of this encounter are staggering. If what Hawthorne said is true, if there really are artifacts capable of harnessing unknown energies, then the balance of power in the galaxy might be about to shift dramatically. Lieutenant Rain finished, his antennae twitching nervously. The captain's eye stalks swivelled, taking in the mix of shock and speculation on his crew's faces. Our mission parameters have clearly changed, he announced. We came to study what we thought was a primitive species. Instead, we've stumbled upon something far more significant. He paused, letting the gravity of the situation sink in. Our priority now is to return to Galactic Confederation space and report what we've learned. The Council needs to be informed immediately. As the crew bustled to prepare the ship for the journey home, Dr. Elex approached the captain, her four arms gesticulating in excitement. Captain, if I may, this encounter opens up so many new avenues of research. The potential applications of human primitive technology, the possibility of energy-absorbing artifacts, the implications for our understanding of galactic history. Captain Zixnex held up a gelatinous pseudopode, silencing the enthusiastic scientist. I share your excitement, Doctor, but we must proceed with caution. If humans have been keeping secrets like this, who knows what else they might be capable of. Meanwhile, in the ship's engineering bay, a junior technician was making a disturbing discovery. Sir, he called out, his voice wavering, I think you need to see this. Lieutenant Reen hurried over, his compound eyes widening as he took in the readouts. By the void, he whispered, Captain, we have a problem. Back on the bridge, Captain Zixnax absorbed the news with growing alarm. The human, Hawthorne, had done more than just steal the musket. He'd left behind a parting gift, a piece of hybrid technology buried deep in the Curiosity systems. It appears to be some sort of tracking device, Breen explained, his mandibles clicking nervously, but it's like nothing I've ever seen. It's as if it's evolving, adapting to our attempts to remove it. Dr. Alex leaned in, her scientific curiosity peaked despite the gravity of the situation. Fascinating, she murmured. It's almost organic in nature, yet clearly artificial. A blend of biological and technological components. That's not all, Green continued. It seems to be broadcasting. Something not to the human ship, but out into deep space. Coordinates, maybe, or a signal of some kind. All well, the implications hung heavy in the air. They weren't just being tracked. They were being used as a beacon. But for what? Captain Zixnax's gelatinous form solidified, taking on the deep blues of determination. We cannot return to Confederation space with this thing aboard. We have no idea what it might do, what it might lead to our worlds. But Captain, Dr. Alex protested, surely the Council scientists would be better equipped to study and neutralize this device. The Captain's eye stalks swiveled towards her, his gaze intense and risk leading whatever this is signalling straight to the heart of our civilization. No, Doctor, we must deal with this ourselves. He turned to Lieutenant Vreen, set a course for the nearest uninhabited system. We'll attempt to remove this device there, where we can't endanger anyone else if things go wrong. As the curiosity changed course, veering away from the safety of Confederation space and into the unknown, the crew couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched. The stars seemed to shine with a new ominous light, and the vastness of space felt suddenly claustrophobic. They had set out to study humanity, to observe and analyse what they thought was a quaint, primitive species. Instead, they found themselves caught in a web of intrigue that spanned centuries and light years. The hunters had become the hunted, their advanced technology rendered almost useless by a combination of human ingenuity and artefacts that defied understanding. As the curiosity disappeared into the depths of uncharted space, one thing was clear. Their encounter with Captain Jack Hawthorne and the mysterious musket was only the beginning. The true nature of humanity, and the secrets they had kept hidden for so long, were about to be revealed, and the galaxy would never be the same again in the dimly lit hold of his patchwork ship. 
Captain Jack Hawthorne cradled the two muskets, his weathered face illuminated by their soft, pulsing glow. He pulled out an ancient, creased map, its edges frayed and its surface covered in cryptic symbols that seemed to shift and change as he watched. Well, old friend, he murmured to the artifacts, looks like our adventure's just beginning. Let's see what other secrets you've been keeping all these years. As his ship slipped into FTL, leaving a trail of impossible energies in its wake, Hawthorne couldn't help but smile. The galaxy thought it had humanity all figured out, but they were about to learn that when it came to humans, the oldest tricks often hid the greatest surprises. The game was afoot, and humanity, armed with nothing more than curiosity, ingenuity, and a pair of ancient muskets, was about to take centre stage in a cosmic drama beyond their wildest imaginations. Little did Hawthorne know that light years away, in a shadowy room on a hidden space station, enigmatic figures were watching his progress with great interest. The pieces were falling into place, a planned millennia in the making finally coming to fruition. The humans have the key, one figure whispered, its voice like the rustle of ancient parchment. Now we wait, and in the vast, uncaring universe, a clock that had been ticking since the dawn of time began to chime. The curiosity drifted in the silent void of an uninhabited star system, its sleek hull reflecting the pale light of a distant sun. Inside, the atmosphere was tense, a far cry from the jovial mood that had permeated the ship just days ago. Captain Zixnex's gelatinous form pulsed with anxious colours as he hovered over the makeshift containment field in the engineering bay. Within the shimmering barrier, the hybrid device left behind by Captain Jack Hawthorne sat innocuously, its organic components writhing slowly as if alive. Any progress, Doctor? the captain asked, his voice synthesizer barely masking his concern. Dr. Ellix's forearms worked furiously over a series of holographic displays, her compound eyes flicking rapidly between redouts. It's unlike anything I've ever seen, Captain, she admitted. The device seems to be a fusion of organic and inorganic components, but the technology, it's not just human. There are elements here that don't match any known species in our database. Lieutenant Rean chittered nervously, his antennae twitching, and it's still broadcasting, Dr. Ellix nodded grimly. Yes, though we've managed to dampen the signal somewhat, but every time we think we've cracked its defences, it adapts. It's almost as if it's learning. The implications hung heavy in the recycled air of the ship. They were dealing with something far beyond their understanding, a piece of technology that seemed to blur the lines between machine and life itself. What about the signal? Captain Zixnex asked. Have we made any progress in decoding it? Dr. Alexis' mandibles clicked in frustration. It's encrypted in ways we've never seen before. But from what we can tell, it seems to be a set of coordinates, constantly updating. It's like a path to where. Reen wondered aloud, voicing the question on everyone's mind. Before anyone could respond, the ship's alarms blared to life. Red emergency, lights bathed the engineering bay in an ominous glow. Captain, a panicked voice came over the comm. We're detecting multiple ships dropping out of FTL. They're, they're not responding to hails and their configurations don't match anything in our database. Captain Zixnek's eye stalks swiveled wildly. On screen? Now? The main view screen flickered to life, revealing a sight that sent shivers through the alien crew. A fleet of ships hung in the void, their designs a nightmarish blend of organic forms and crystalline structures. They pulsed with an inner light that hurt the eyes to look at directly, and their very presence seemed to distort the fabric of space around them. Hey, by the void, Reen whispered, his exoskeleton pale with fear. What a As if in answer, the containment field around Hawthorne's device suddenly collapsed. The hybrid technology pulsed once, twice, and then, with a flash of impossible energies, it vanished. For a moment, there was silence. Then, without warning, the alien fleet opened far. The curiosity rocked under the assault, its advanced shields barely holding against weapons that seemed to defy the laws of physics. Captain Zixnax barked orders, his gelatinous form rippling with the deep reds of battle stations. Evasive maneuvers, get us out of here. But as the science vessel attempted to flee, it found itself caught in a web of gravitational distortions. The alien ships moved with impossible grace, herding the curiosity like a pack of predators toying with their prey. Just as all seemed lost, a familiar voice crackled over the ship's comm system. Well, 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 drawled Captain Jack Hawthorne, his tone somehow managing to convey both amusement and grim determination. Looks like you folks could use a hand. The viewscreen split, 
showing Hawthorne's patchwork ship darting between the alien vessels, its hybrid weapons leaving trails of quantum fire in their wake. Hawthorne! Captain Zixnax exclaimed, a mixture of relief and suspicion in his voice. What are you doing here? What are these things? No time for twenty questions, Jellycap. Hawthorne shot back. Let's just say our little game of cat and mouse stirred up something nasty. Now, if you want to live to study another day, I suggest you follow my lead. With that, Hawthorne's ship unleashed a barrage of energy pulses that seemed to bend and twist in ways that defied conventional physics. Where they struck the alien vessels, reality itself seemed to warp and tear. That's impossible, Dr. Alex breathed, her scientific mind reeling. Those energy signatures, they're identical to the readings we got from the musket. Like I said, Doc, Hawthorne's voice, held a hint of grim satisfaction. There's more to human history than meets the eye. Now punch in these coordinates and prepare for a jump like nothing you've ever experienced before, as a string of numbers scrolled across their screens. The alien crew hesitated, caught between their fear of the unknown attackers and their distrust of the human who'd so recently outwitted them. Captain Zixnex's gelatinous form solidified with decision. Do it, he ordered. At this point, Hawthorne is a devil we know. The Curiosity's engines hummed to life, its nerve computer straining to process the bizarre coordinates Hawthorne had provided. As they prepared to jump, the human's voice came over the comm once more. Oh, and folks, you might want to hold on to your tentacles. This ride's going to get a little bumpy, with a flash of light and a sensation that felt like reality itself was being turned inside out. Both ships vanished, leaving behind a tableau of destruction as the mysterious alien fleet continued its relentless assault on empty space. When the Curiosity emerged from, whatever form of FTL travel they had just experienced, its crew found themselves in a place that defied description. It was as if they were suspended in a bubble of normal space, while outside, the very fabric of the universe twisted and churned in psychedelic patterns. Welcome to the in-between, Hawthorne's voice crackled over the calm, a hint of weariness creeping into his usual bravado one of the universe's best-kept secrets, and humanity's ace in the hole. As the alien crew struggled to process what they were seeing, Hawthorne's ship docked with the Curiosity, its patchwork hull seeming almost mundane compared to the insanity outside. Minutes later, Captain Jack Hawthorne strode onto the Curiosity Bridge, still clutching the two ancient muskets. He cut an odd figure, part pirate, part advanced alien technology, with a dash of roguish charm that seemed out of place in the sterile environment of the science vessel. All right, folks, he announced, tipping his anachronistic tricorn hat. I reckon it's time we had a proper chat about what's really going on in this big, bad universe of ours. Captain Zixnex's knee stalks quivered with a mixture of fear and curiosity. You owe us an explanation, human. What were those ships? Where he brought us? And what in the name of the galactic core is really going on? Hawthorne sighed, suddenly looking every bit his age which the alien crew realized with a start might be far greater than his appearance suggested. It's a long story, he began, absently stroking one of the muskets, one that goes back a lot further than your galactic confederation, or even humanity as you know it. And over the next hour, Hawthorne wove a tale that shook the alien crew to their core. He spoke of ancient civilizations that had risen and fallen before the first fish crawled onto land on Earth, of wars fought with weapons that could remake reality itself and of a terrible threat that had been locked away eons ago, waiting for the right key to set it free. These muskets, Hawthorne explained, holding up the artifacts, they're not just weapons, they're keys, recorders, and maps all rolled into one. Old James Cook, he didn't just chart the Pacific. He unwittingly mapped tears in the fabric of space-time, places where the barriers between dimensions are thin. Dr. Ellix's scientific curiosity overrode her fear. But how? How could a primitive human artifact possibly? Hawthorne cut her off with a sharp laugh. Primitive. Doc, your lot need to seriously reconsider what you think you know about Earth's history. Humanity. We're not just Johnny-come-latelys to the galactic stage. We're the caretakers, the guardians of secrets older than time itself. He went on to explain how, throughout human history, certain individuals had stumbled upon the truth. Explorers, scientists, even artists. All had brushed against the edges of a reality far vaster and more terrible than they could comprehend. Eyes the muskets, the pyramids, even some of our old folk tales. They're all part of a vast system designed to keep the horrors at bay, Hawthorne continued. But now, thanks to your well-meaning archaeological expeditions, the system's been disrupted. The keys are turning, the locks are failing, 
and what's been sleeping for eons is starting to wake up. Captain Zixnex's gelatinous form rippled with distress. Are you saying that we, the Galactic Confederation, are responsible for unleashing some ancient evil upon the galaxy? Hawthorne shook his head. Not entirely. This was always going to happen eventually. You just sped up the timetable a bit. But don't worry. We've been preparing for this day for a long, long time. We, Lieutenant Reen asked, his antennae twitching nervously. The Keepers, Hawthorne replied, a hint of pride in his voice. A secret organisation that's existed on Earth for millennia, passing down the knowledge and the responsibility from generation to generation. We've been guiding human development, nudging us towards the stars, all while keeping the old horrors at bay. Dr. Alex's mind was reeling. But the technology you used against those ships, it's beyond anything we've ever seen. How could you have kept this hidden for so long? Hawthorne's face grew serious, because we had to. The moment we revealed ourselves, we'd have painted a target on Earth's back. Every two-bit galactic power would be knocking down our door, trying to get their tentacles on tech they're not ready to handle. And trust me, compared to what's coming, your average alien invasion would be a walk in the park. The implications of Hawthorne's words hung heavy in the air. The alien crew found themselves re-evaluating everything they thought they knew about the galaxy, about humanity, and about their place in the grand scheme of things. So what happens now? Captain Zixnax asked. His voice synthesizer barely above a whisper, Hawthorne's roguish grin returned. Then there was a hard edge to it now. Now? Now we fight. The barriers are weakening, and what's on the other side makes your worst nightmares look like a day at the beach. But humanity has been preparing for this war since before we learned to make fire, and we've got a few tricks up our sleeves yet. He turned to the view screen, gazing out at the twisting, impossible space at the end between. I brought you here because you've seen too much to go back to your old lives. The Confederation needs to be warned, prepared, and like it or not, you lot are now part of a story that's been unfolding for billions of years. The alien crew exchanged glances, a mixture of fear and determination in their eyes. They had set out to study what they thought was a primitive species, only to find themselves on the front lines of a war for the very fabric of reality. I won't lie to you, Hawthorne continued, his voice taking on a tone of grim determination. The odds are stacked against us. What's coming? It's beyond anything your science can explain, beyond even the most advanced technology. We're talking about beings that can reshape reality with a thought. Entities that exist in dimensions we can barely comprehend. Dr. Ellex, ever the scientist, couldn't help but interject. But surely, with the combined knowledge of the Galactic Confederation and your hidden human technology, we stand a chance. Hawthorne's laugh was hollow. Oh, we've got a chance, all right. A snowball's chance in a supernova, maybe. But humanity's faced worse odds before. We're scrappy like that. He held up the two muskets, their dull metal gleaming, with an inner light that seemed to pulse in time with the swirling chaos outside. These babies? They're more than just keys or weapons. They're a blueprint, a guide to weapons and defences, built by the ancients who fought this war the first time around. Captain Zixnek's eye stalks swiveled towards the artefacts, seeing them in a new light. And you believe these, these primitive tools, can stand against the forces we saw? Primitive. Hawthorne scoffed. Captain, what you saw was just the tip of the iceberg. These primitive tools are quantum computers, dimensional anchors, and reality stabilizers all rolled into one. In the right hands, they can rewrite the laws of physics on a whim. He turned to Dr. Alex, his eyes glinting with a mixture of challenge and hope. That's where you come in, Doc. We need your science, your fresh perspective. The Keepers have been at this for millennia. But sometimes it takes an outsider's eyes to see what we've been missing. The inner archaeologist's compound eyes widened, her forearms gesticulating in excitement, despite the gravity of the situation. You mean, you want us to help? To study these artefacts? To unlock their secrets? Hawthorne nodded. That's right. But more than that, we need you to be our bridge to the Galactic Confederation. What's coming won't stop with Earth, or even this galaxy. If we're going to stand a chance... We need every sentient species out there ready to fight. Captain Zixnek's gelatinous form solidified, taking on the deep blues of determination. You'll have our full cooperation, Captain Hawthorne. But I must ask, why us? Why trust us with this information? After we, after we dismissed your species as primitive, Hawthorne's face softened, a wry smile playing at the corners of his mouth. Because that's what humanity does, Captain. We take the underdog, the misfit, 
the non-believer and we show them what's possible, your curiosity, your drive to explore and understand. That's what we need. Not blind obedience, but the ability to question, to think outside the box. He gestured to the swirling chaos outside the viewscreen. Out there, in the spaces between realities, the old rules don't apply. We need minds flexible enough to adapt, to see patterns where others see any chaos. And from what I've seen, you folks have that in... As the gravity of their situation sank in, a new sense of purpose filled the bridge of the Curiosus. They had come seeking knowledge and now found themselves on the brink of a war beyond imagining. But with that terror came an excitement, a realization that they stood at the precipice of discoveries that would reshape their understanding of the universe. So, Hawthorne said, his voice cutting through the contemplative silence, who's ready to save reality as we know it. One by one, the alien crew nodded, their earlier fear giving way to determination. They'd been brought into a secret older than time itself, entrusted with the fate of not just their civilization, but all of existence. As the Curiosity and Hawthorne's patchwork ship prepared to journey deeper into the in-between, towards mysteries and dangers beyond imagination, one thing was clear. The galaxy would never be the same again. Humanity, long dismissed as a primitive curiosity, was about to show the universe what they were truly capable of. And somewhere in the vast, uncaring cosmos, ancient entities stirred in their slumber, sensing that the game they had begun eons ago was entering its final, decisive phase. The last laugh, it seemed, might just belong to the species everyone had underestimated. For in the face of cosmic horror and impossible odds, humanity's greatest weapons had always been their ingenuity, their adaptability, and their unwavering determination to rage against the dying of the light. The war for reality had begun, and at its heart stood a motley crew of aliens and humans, armed with nothing but ancient artifacts, advanced science, and the audacity to believe they could make a difference. As the curiosity and Hawthorne ship, which he had affectionately dubbed the bootstrapper, navigated the mind-bending currents of the in-between. Dr. Ellix found herself working alongside the human captain. Her four arms moved in a blur over holographic displays, correlating data from the muskets with the swirling chaos outside. It's extraordinary, she chittered, her compound eyes wide with wonder. The muskets aren't just recording data. They're actively interacting with the fabric of space-time around us. It's as if they're communicating with the universe itself. Orthor nodded, a gint of pride in his eyes. That's the beauty of it, Doc. Our ancestors might not have understood the science, but they knew there was something special about these artifacts. They're not just tools. They're a legacy, passed down through generations, accumulating knowledge and power. Captain Zick's necks oozed closer, his gelatinous form rippling with curiosity. But how do they work? Surely there must be some scientific principle we can understand, Hawthorne chuckled. Oh, there's science behind it all right. Just not the kind you're used to. We're dealing with quantum mechanics on a scale that makes your most advanced theories look like finger painting. He held up one of the muskets, its metal gleaming with an inner light that seemed to shift and change as they watched. His beauties operate on principles that blur the lines between science and what you might call magic. They can manipulate probability, bend causality, even rewrite the laws of physics in a localized area. Lieutenant Green's antennae twitched skeptically. That's... that's impossible. The energy requirements alone would be... Astronomical? Hawthorne finished for him, a wry smile on his face. You're thinking too small, bug eyes. These weapons don't just use energy. They harvest it from the very fabric of reality itself. Every shot fire doesn't deplete them. It makes them stronger. As if to demonstrate, Hawthorne aimed one of the muskets at a point in space where the swirling energies of the in-between seemed to coerce. With a sound that was felt more than heard, a beam of impossible light lanced out carving a tunnel of calm, normal space through the chaos. The alien crew watched in awe as stars became visible through the tunnel, a window into a part of the galaxy that should have been millions of light-years away. They, by the void, Captain Zixnex whispered, his voice synthesized and barely able to capture his shock. You've created a wormhole with a single shot, Hawthorne nodded grimly. Now imagine what the things we're fighting can do. The muskets are powerful, but they're just pale imitations of the tech the ancients wielded. The beings we're up against. They don't just break the laws of physics. They rewrite them on a whim. The reality of their situation sank in a new. They weren't just fighting an enemy. They were up against entities that could reshape the very nature of existence. So how do we win? Dr. Alex asked. 
their scientific excitement tempered by the enormity of the threat they faced. If these beings are so powerful, what hope do we have? Hawthorne's face softened, a look of determination replacing his usual roguish grin. The same way humanity's always won against impossible odds, Doc. We adapt, we improvise, and we never, ever give up. He turned to the alien crew, his voice taking on a tone of steel. You've seen a glimpse of what we're up against, and I won't lie to you. It's going to get worse before it gets better. But humanity didn't come this far by rolling over when the odds were stacked against us. Captain Zixnek's form solidified, taking on the deep blues of resolve. We're with you, Captain Hawthorne. The Galactic Confederation must be warned, must be prepared. But how do we even begin to fight such a threat? Hawthorne's grin returned, a spark of mischief in his eyes. Well, Captain, that's where things get interesting. You see, while your lot were busy dismissing us as primitives, we humans were preparing for this day, and we've got more than a few tricks up our sleeves. He gestured to the muskets. These are just the tip of the iceberg, scattered across Earth. Hidden in plain sight are artifacts and technologies that make these look like toys. The pyramids of Giza, quantum stabilizers, Stonehenge, a dimensional anchor point, the Nazca lines, a map of weak points in the fabric of reality. Dr. Alexis Mandibles clicked in excitement. You mean... All those archaeological mysteries, these were part of a vast defense network, Doc, Hawthorne finished for her. Humanity has been the unwitting guardians of reality for millennia. Now it's time to wake up the old defenses and remind the universe why you don't mess with Earth. As if on cue, alarms blared throughout both ships. Lieutenant Vreen's tentacles danced over his console, his compound eyes widening in alarm. Multiple contacts, he shouted. There... They're coming through the breach we created. Through the tunnel of calm space Hawthorne had carved with the musket, dark shapes began to emerge. They defied description, seeming to shift and change even as the eye tried to focus on them. Reality itself seemed to warp around them, stars blinking out as they passed. Well, folks, Hawthorne said, cocking both muskets with a theatrical flourish. Looks like class is in session. Time to show you what these babies can really do. As the eldritch horrors bore down on them, the curiosity-chen and the bootstrap and prepared for battle. But this was no ordinary fight. This was a clash between the laws of physics, as they knew them, and forces that threatened to unravel the very fabric of existence. Captain Zixnax, Dr. Alex, and Lieutenant Rain found themselves manning stations they barely understood, guided by Hawthorne's rapid-fire instructions. The ship's systems had been augmented with human technology, that seemed to operate on principles that defied conventional science. Remember, Hawthorne called out as he took aim with the muskets, reality is more malleable than you think. Don't just fire weapons, rewrite the rules of engagement. What followed was a battle unlike anything the galaxy had ever seen. The Curiosity's time sensors, recalibrated by Dr. Ellix's frantic calculations, painted targeting solutions in probability clouds rather than fixed points. Lieutenant Vrain found himself navigating not through space, but through potential futures, choosing the paths where their survival was most likely. And through it all, Hawthorne stood at the center. The two muskets, blazing with energies that could reshape reality itself. Each shot didn't just strike the enemy. It rewrote the laws of physics in localized areas, creating bubbles where the eldritch horrors found their impossible anatomies suddenly subject to the mundane laws of our universe. That's it! Hawthorne shouted encouragingly, as the alien crew began to grasp the insane logic of the battle. Don't think in terms of what's possible. Make the impossible your new baseline. Slowly but surely they began to turn the tide. The eldritch horrors, for all their reality warping power, found themselves outmaneuvered by the sheer audacity and adaptability of their opponents, in a species they dismissed as primitive. And a gaggle of aliens who had never even conceived of such combat were holding their own against cosmic nightmares as the last of the entities retreated, collapsing the wormhole behind them, an eerie silence fell over the ships. The swirling energies of the in-between seemed almost calm in comparison to the chaos they had just witnessed. Captain Zixnex's gelatinous form quivered with a mixture of exhaustion and exhilaration that... A warm-up, Hawthorne finished for him, his voice grim despite the victory. Trust me, Captain, the real fight is just beginning. Dr. Alex her forearms still flying over the holographic displays, looked up with a mix of scientific awe and dawning comprehension. Captain Hawthorne, she said slowly, I think I'm starting to understand. The muskets, the technology. It's not about raw power, is it? It's about flexibility, adaptability, 
Hawthorne nodded, a spark of approval in his eyes. Now you're getting it, Doc. Humanity's greatest strength has never been our technology or our weapons. It's our ability to adapt, to think on our feet, to look at the impossible and say, challenge accepted. He turned to address the entire crew, his voice taking on a tone of both caution and hope. What you've seen today is just the beginning. The enemies we face are beyond imagination, wielding powers that can unmake reality itself. But remember this, they've been asleep for eons set in their ways. We, on the other hand, have been preparing for this moment without even knowing it. Captain Zixnek's eye stalks swivel towards Hawthorne. A new respect evident in his posture. What would you have us do, Captain? How can the Galactic Confederation prepare for, for this? Hawthorne's face broke into a grin. The same roguish charm that had first greeted them on the Curiosity Bridge now tempered with the weight of their shared experience. Well, my gelatinous friend, that's where the real fun begins. We've got a galaxy to wake up, defences to activate, and a war to win. And something tells me your confederation is about to get a crash course in humanity's greatest hits. As the curiosity and the bootstrap are set course for the heart of galactic confederation space, the alien crew couldn't help but feel a sense of anticipation. They had set out to study a primitive species, only to find themselves on the front lines of a war for the very fabric of reality. But more than that, they had discovered something profound about their human allies. In the face of cosmic horror and impossible odds, humanity's greatest weapons had always been their ingenuity, their adaptability, and their unwavering determination to rage against the dying. The last laugh, it seemed, might just belong to the species everyone had underestimated. For in the vast, uncaring cosmos, where eldritch abominations sought to unravel the very laws of physics, humanity stood as the unlikeliest of guardians, armed with nothing more than outdated muskets, improvised technology, and a stubborn refusal to accept defeat. They were about to show the universe why you should never ever count out the underdogs, as the war for reality had begun, and humanity, in all its chaotic, adaptable glory, was ready to...